So everyone who knows me, who is subscribed to this channel, knows that I love building my custom PC. And I'm just a Windows fanboy. I love that I could customize it fully, use any part I want to at a reasonable price, customize the lights, and just overall make the setup look neat. So this PC behind me right here, I paid roughly 2000 around 2700 for everything. Um, excluding the monitors and peripherals and stuff like that so just the internals the fans and yeah I could have got it cheaper probably around 2000 probably 500 so what I have on my PC is a i9 9900k that turbos up to 5 gigahertz also RTX 2080 super 32 gigs of RAM all the good Corsair fans, all the top tier Corsair AIO coolers and stuff like that. So yeah, you can see why it's kind of expensive because I just wanted good things. But the reason I'm telling you this is because this MacBook behind me right here is the base model MacBook and it cost me over $2,497. It only has an i7 processor, an Intel UHD 630 graphics, and also it only has 16 gigs of RAM. So you can see why I'm trying to compare to show you the price to performance doesn't really match but you might be saying Siobhan why would you pay so much for a MacBook that doesn't match up in par with performance you could just build another PC or get another Windows gaming laptop but the thing is I just ended up loving Mac if you guys knew as well I had the MacBook Air and I needed more performance out of it so I opted out to fork out some money to get the MacBook Pro and yeah I just I fell in love with Max. I think Apple trapped me in the ecosystem. I have the Apple Watch, the iPhone, the iPad. Now I have the MacBook Pro. And hopefully I don't get too of an enthusiast and then spend more money trying to get the best MacBook Pro. But so far, I've been loving the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's good for light video editing light photo editing and my favorite part of it is just to use it while i'm not at my desk and since this whole corona thing is almost in like phase two we're getting to go outside more i think that's one of the reasons why it pushed me to get this because i just needed more performance instead of this ipad don't get me wrong the ipad is still good but when i'm out on the road i want to edit with final cut and the ipad for now just can't do that so yeah these are my thoughts on the MacBook Pro 16 inch at the base model. So in my MacBook Pro I type a lot, especially during the weeks when I'm checking emails or writing scripts. I do tend to use my keyboard a lot. I'm a mechanical keyboard type of person so I value some good tactile feedback and I think that Apple definitely made the right decision switching from the butterfly keyboard to the the older layout which is the switches switches and first the layout gone is the widely hated arrow key and back is the inverted T. Now I'm glad so many users are passionate like about keyboards to make Apple make this decision. Thumbs up for that. Secondly, the key travel. What I find interesting is the feel of the key travel. There's a very definite difference in feel when you bottom out the keys on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's so easy to hammer down on the keys when you get into the groove and the typing experience is overall really good. Now bottoming out on the 16 inch MacBook Pro feels more cushioned. The 16 inch MacBook Pro's key is way 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 quieter than the butterfly keyboards from the previous MacBook Pro which was the 15 inch and of all keyboard errors this is the one where I have to step back and be understanding of the needs of others so if you're always typing at night in a small space for example where I am right now it's not like the neighbors are close by if you're in a dorm room you have roommates your parents close by typing on a keyboard you have to bear in mind that hey they're sleeping so the reason why I'm ta I'm telling you guys this is because it's not that loud when typing especially with my uh, mechanical keyboard I'm gonna let you guys hear the difference between my mechanical keyboard and my MacBook Pro keyboards and you can see that it's not that loud and it's actually really good for typing at nights
Another thing I'm really happy about with the keyboard is that they went with the physical escape key because the touch bar escape key was not the wave. So thank you, Apple. You see, Apple is kind of listening to us now as consumers. So maybe that's the reason why I'm starting to like them more when it comes on and even trusting them when it comes on to laptops. The next thing I want to talk about is the display, which is probably one of my favorite things apart from the speakers. Now watching videos on here or just scrolling through files, editing pictures, browsing the web is actually a treat to the eyes. The text looks sharp. It's not as pixel packed as my current 4K monitor back here, but it still looks amazing. Also the extra half inch or so of screen space in the 16 inch MacBook Pro is noticeable, but not revolutionary by any means. There's just little more space for everything to fit in the field of view. I found the change in resolution to be a bit more jarring actually. The 16 inch display has a resolution of 30, 3072 by 1920 from the 20, 2880 by 1800 on the 15.4 inch MacBook. So if you run the math, the 16 inch MacBook Pro pixel density measures up to 226 pixels per inch where slightly from the 15 inch MacBook Pro which is 220 ppi. Now the weight, the size and the battery life all important things to talk about when it comes on to the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Okay, so the 16 inch MacBook Pro is heavy. Maybe I'm not just used to it yet, but coming from my 11 inch iPad and 13 inch MacBook Air, it's already more easy to throw in a bag. Also, if you have the older 15 inch MacBook Pro and you're thinking about upgrading to this one, this one is bigger in every direction. It's thicker, it's wider, it's a little bit heavier because it has a bigger battery. And yeah, overall, it's just a bigger footprint. Between the extra weight and the extra size, you'll have to make sure your current bag or your backpack has enough room for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I use a Herschel backpack and the 16 inch MacBook Pro just barely fits into the laptop sleeve. I don't think too many people will have to purchase a new bag to house the new 16 inch MacBook Pro, but if you're currently operating under the smallest tolerances, this may be something to consider also carrying this around on your back for the entire school day or where you at if you're if you're literally walking with this thing for a good while you will start to feel the pain because i'm saying this is not a light laptop certain times i'm laying in bed it's kind of uncomfortable because of how big it is but as i said before i'm just not used to it i'm normally the type of person to put my laptop on my chest and this one is not the vibe because you don't really get the benefits out of the touch bar it's kind of heavy on your chest so i normally just sit up in bed nowadays when i'm using it and i think that's the way people normally use their laptops anyways in terms of battery life macbooks have always had an impressive battery life especially compared to windows laptops and while you could almost forgive the macbook pro 16 inch for having a shorter battery life due to its larger screen and more powerful components but there's no need to in fact apple has managed the remarkable feat of making battery life longer when i have auto brightness on i tend to find that it will last longer than when i manually adjust the brightness so that's just some tip for you but i'm sure that if you guys use it periodically throughout the day you'd get probably a day or two out of the macbook but if you're on it 24 7 unlike me i have a desktop so i mainly use that and i use my laptop when i'm leaving or chilling at the bed at the couch outside you know just to get away from this environment you know free my mind when i'm scripting i would just get to leave go to the the porch stuff like that then i would use the macbook that's why it lasts me a day or two now as i said before these speakers are insane now if you guys saw when i unboxed this thing and i heard the speakers for the first time i heard siri and i was like no yo this siri audio quality is super clean i had to test the audio it's banging 10 out of 10 i don't know what they did with this audio probably i don't know but this audio quality on the macbooks the air was good too but the pro just blew my mind it's a bigger footprint so i, I guess they had more room for a bit better speaker but guys this has to be the uh, let me know if in the comments if there's any laptops out there that has a better sounding speaker than the macbook watching movies on here listening to music it's super loud sometimes i can't even max out the volume due to the fact that how loud it is when it gets to max volume you could tend to hear a little reverb you know what i'm saying so always i always keep it around 90 80 percent if i'm trying to vibe out regularly i keep it at 30 40 percent and it sounds crystal clear no issues with the speakers thumbs up to apple i think they spoiled me as well because every laptop now that i hear i'm expecting it to have good speakers like this but they just don't have it the trackpad on here is also really good i don't know why it's so huge pause 
pause it's huge it's clicky I think it also uses like a software click it's not like a physical click because so when it's off you don't really feel the click so I'm assuming I'm not sure as I said before I just got into the MacBook world and I'm loving every bit of it but yeah the trackpad is nice you have all the room to do every gesture you could normally with my iPad you can see how small this trackpad is so doing the gestures on here is kind of you know not the best but with this bad boy right here look at all this trackpad space you know you could do all the gestures you could do the face just i'm just playing but yeah you could just see how big this real estate and the footprint is on this trackpad and yeah you have no issues with the trackpad the best probably the best trackpad i've ever used on a laptop so i know you might be saying siobhan so there's only good things about this i know like <laughs> i have to be using this all right guys i have to be using this and this is what you call a dongle. The reason is, if you're new like me, coming from a Windows PC, this MacBook only has USB-C ports, Thunderbolt. It has four of them, which I guess is good. But there's no SD card slots, no USB type A ports, nothing. You only have a headphone jack, thank God it's still there, and four Thunderbolt ports. I guess that's the future, but because of that, I have to be walking around with this dongle. If I lose this dongle, I can't transfer my files because this dongle has two USB A ports, SD card, and also a micro SD card slot. So this is what you have to use to transfer your files if you're coming from Windows. But yeah, that's the only downside, downfall with it. I guess it's the future. I can see how bad an SD card would look on it now, but why not have one? I think there's enough space for it, to be honest. But yeah. That's just my two cents, and probably that's the only thing I hate about the MacBook Pro. Another thing I surprisingly liked on this MacBook is the touch bar. Everyone I talk to about touch bars, they always say, oh, it's a gimmick, it's not good. But I actually really, really like it. I'm not sure if it's because I'm a newbie and I try to use every feature because this touchpad is golden. Now with the touch bar, I find it to be most handy when I have to look down at my fingers. Say, for example, I'm typing in a password and the big glowing blue sign-in button is just right there with the touch bar and it's ready to go. I also prefer the touch bar control center to manage display brightness and volume with the physical hardware keys. And most of all, I love the tabs it gives me when I'm using notes. All right guys, so just to show you how useful this is. Now this is Spotify. You could see we could play pause music, but when I jump onto OneNote and I start to edit, you could see the entire thing change, right? And it's just really useful. So for example, let me just type something. Hello, my name is, and I want to change this text. Just go here, change the text color to like probably blue. Look how quick that is. Then I could just go back to automatic and I have a get rid because YouTube channel. And you could know how useful this could get, you know, especially if you like to organize things. And then this app syncs right across to different platforms. You could easily get bullet points just like so. Step one, step two, and I could change it to numbers as well insert tables just from here and yeah it's just an overall great experience guys like this mucho gusto now finally the performance now i've edited a few videos here with final cut this video that you're watching right now was edited with final cut and also i've did some lightroom stuff so photoshop thumbnails were created with this and it's great. It's not the best because I think it's limited due to the fact that it's running the Intel 630U graphics card and not like a Radeon graphics card. Or for example, as I said before, my PC, I have a RTX 2080 Super inside. So yeah, you can see where the performance kind of, you know, doesn't reflect the price. Also, I know it's only 16 gigs. I'm used to 32 gigs with my PC, but the 16 gigs didn't really show its true colors. Like it was working really well i had no issues opening and closing tabs multiple chrome files open if you guys know about my previous macbook air when i had tons of chrome files chrome tabs open it would start to slow down with the macbook pro i haven't had that issue now if you have the money and this is your only computer i would get a 32 gigs graphics card i would get the radeon 
5600 the latest graphics card in here the i9 processor in here because that's gonna be my baby that's gonna be what i'm using every day but for me personally someone who isn't going to edit all my videos on here isn't going to use this solely as my main pc this is the perfect like stepping stone for me to get into the mac world and i think i made the right decision hopefully down the road i'll make a three two month review afterwards but guys if you're looking for a macbook pro this is the way to go your first one you don't want to do too much you're on a budget i think you'll live with the base model now if you're more of an enthusiast you're working on 4k content hard editing this is your main beast you'll need to upgrade that to something more powerful but yes guys that was my review of the 16 inch macbook pro right here let me know if i missed anything touched on anything and yes the webcam still sucks so i didn't even want to talk about that it's a horrible webcam i don't know why they put it in here but it's terrible but yeah overall it's great it's good screen good speakers good battery life it's kind of heavy not so portable but then again that's where i have my ipad so yeah let me know what you guys think about this review down below in the comments and as always love peace and tweaks signing out I belong, I belong to you I belong, I belong to you Do just what you want